Good morning from Yami B TV. Wishing you all well, send loads of love as usual. Hoping your day is going to be the best it possibly can. I like when you not run the jokes in the messages. You get I get vo voice notes from uh, some of you not saying that Yami uh, uh, bigging up Paul as well. Um, what I was going to say, yeah, I've been reminiscing a lot. Uh, since I've been ill, I still feel weak today and a bit slurry. Sorry about some of the stuff. Sometimes I do get head rushes and run up there and put things up. I don't put it perf. I don't put it right. So I don't let. I'm not letting you know exactly what it is. But then I get messages and other mix because I'm not in touch too much. I'm low intelligence on the YouTube level, so Uncle Yami doesn't really know what's going on in the background because it never concerns me. But today I'm going to take you lot way way back, right? I know we've never interviews in James English, every other other one, and another one that I mentioned that when in, in the juvenile court uh, when I was in care, and I first went, got the detention centre, and I remember you know we talked about it, the juvenile, uh, the lady lay bench ladies, said to me, Samson, look, we Sammy, we don't want to send you to jail, we don't want you to go there, we go back into a home. I said no, I begged him to send me to detention centre, can you believe that? Detention centre, Blanton House send, right? The senders were both of them were running at that time, were short, sharp shocks. If you're ever familiar with the film Scum, right? This, that is the reality of the old days, right? Now, you know, Razor Smith talks about, he was, <laughs> Razor Smith done it in 76 or 75, because he's older than me, Razor. But you think about how harsh it was then, if it was harsh for me, the early 80s. <laughs> So I, I begged them, I said, no, I'm not going to they, with reluctancy. They gave me three months detention centre. So then you get in the, in the little van and then you go, you go, you, you go there. And, and then obviously you remember that you step off the van, you, they, they warn you and pat you down and then say to you, look, if, when I, if I ask you a question, you say, sir. If there's a lady asking you, you say, mom, what's your name? I didn't say, sir, perhaps straight away. Go into the induction bit, right? My eyes watering all day. Everyone I was, was getting the laugh. Everyone was always laughing at me. I know, I know. I was too small, man. You, de you come, so you go in reception, you get the kit, and you can. They, 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 there's a sign saying he tells you to run with the kit. Run, 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 run. So you're running with all that your, your bedding and all that kind of stuff and the shoes and the trousers that they give you for work and then the dungarees and all that kind of stuff, right? But when you get to the other end, the man's saying, they, they, he's saying, no, you're not allowed to run. <laughs> you can't you read the sign that says don't run, and then you get another slap. Right, but when I look back, it's kind of it really inhuman big treatment uh, for things. But in some ways, though, Uncle Yami's got to think that, 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 I think that disciplined me, though, into the early days, like, you, you know, like for the, for the later journey, if you get what I mean, because you knew what kind of how deep it could go so you had the rough treatment but also you know as you get older that they're playing tricks on you to make you to strengthen you up but some of it's not justified uh many many men suffered badly at the hands of that old uh thing but uh nah it, i wanted to go there so you go into that induction bit i'm in the work i used to, i woke up in the morning i could hear all the work parties left by the left quick march left left and you know the, all the work parties line up like in one sink in double file or whatever and then march on and then you do it's like that you know, like the farms the digging the picking and whatever you, job you had the kitchens or and then you go into the first thing in the morning you go into the boot room imagine you've got the line up in the cold when you wake up in the morning at 5 36 5 36 cold in the winter with no top on and you have to stand out there to two single file next to into the boot room where you've got to wash and get ready, prepare yourself for the day. And I remember he used to walk and he used to say, yeah, you shave, but there was nothing to shave. And I said to him, no, 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 I can't, I, I ain't got no gristle or nothing because I look too young, obviously. I was like 14, 15, 14, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Though this was after the stabbing, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was there that I saw, it was, them, them, you know, there's a few names obviously from way back then, Benson and Zilli Pereira, uh, Victor Edbongon, uh, Curtis, I fucking forgot his name as well, and a geezer called Osinoa. I'll never forget, you know, I never know what happened to him because they come to tell him that his mum died in there. And when you go into the kitchen, because you get, you get some slop food, because you can get the rice pudding like glue, and then you get the, the stew, but there's no meat in it. So, but 
because they broke the news to him, they didn't break it to him properly. Uh, he, when he got, went to get his breakfast or his dinner, I'll never forget it. I'll never see a boy fight like that. I had the loss of, you know, them bringing that kind of news there. And I'll oh, never, it took about 25, he was running with all of them. I forgot where he was from, you know. Uh, but I was there, right? Um, ben Simmons as well. Another name is really got brother called Robert Simmons and um, George Constantino. I think his brother was there. I can't, I'm vaguely picturing it. And um, Dean Nash, I think. And um, what's his name? I'll get I'll get round to it. But I've never seen it. But it saddened me to see a boy. You know, they come to when they come in to tell you things, they don't break it down properly. You know. But you know, but it kind of made me physically strong for my thing because. In those early days, you they you you go to the gym. They said play that um, British bulldog. That's right, where or murder ball, where you run and everybody's going to kick you and beat you and all that kind of stuff. I mean, really today it wouldn't be really you wouldn't be allowed to have these kind of places. But it's deep, you know, when I look back as well. So um, I got I because when you go on, I was so small, but I knew I was quite strong. From a, from a size, if you get what I mean, when I was younger, because they just give you the medicine ball to run around a football pitch. They used to play a little bit of 11 a side on the green pitch in Blanta, but they wanted me to play, but I was too small, even though I had the silky skills and I bobbed and weaved in and out everywhere, right? I wanted to play, but I just wasn't strong enough. And I remember the gym screw always used to say to me, You're one day, one day, one day, yummy, right? But really and truly, when you used to go off to march, they have this man called Mr. Gerd, right? An old screw, right? Old officer. But he had glasses. But I used to, when he used to do the part by the left quick march, everyone used to get me at it. Like to say, when he says left, go right. I used to go, when he used to go by the left, quick, but left, I used to go right. He goes, party old. And then he used to go, who's trying to be the comedian? Cut it out. And he used to call everyone lofty if they was tall. And he goes, oh, hey you shorty, shorty or short ass or something like that. But I never minded him, he used to make me laugh. He was he was funny, he just said, he goes, I'm not your mother, I'm not your grandmother, I'm a fucking screw. And then he used to go like that. He said, he said you go, when it was tuck shop day, because everybody they used to get bullied, you have to have the bigger boys standing out there. Um, but I don't, obviously I, I was always, I was just getting squeezed. But they used to come and want to take, um, the toffee bars off you and those little Mars bars you only used to get a pound and something but when he used to take us to the canteen he used to say you rob old snatch old ladies handbags you used to do you robbing the, 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 the poor you're doing all the burgle people's houses you point guns and then the next thing you know they're giving you sweets that's what he used to say I'm telling you it was only one pound ninety but when I look back it's really really funny man I try and remember some more names but it's not really human. I mean at night you remember when everybody at night in the dormitories, they used to say, yeah, me throw stuff, and everybody should start throwing buttons at each other. I know, I used to find it this funny, and then that rockabilly night, man, he used to say, get your head down before I knock it down. And he used to say, it's you, in it, It's you, in it, baby face, it's you. He said, they're comfy, I'm not going to give me a conk on my head, and it knocked down into the pillow. I know, I've been with when I come out, though. Very strange, man. I, got, I remember coming out fresh, because you remember you're not allowed to smoke no cigarette in there. Right, so that was like six weeks of half a sentence. Right, uh, I remember I done another one as well. Went to Olympsy Bay as well. Can't think. Of, yeah, it was a detention center, Olympsy Bay, in the early days. But a more senior one, Bosmere, Hartsmere House. Yeah, a bit better than that. Not as rough as Blantyre. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did both of them uh, before I went to Ellsbury. Yeah, I'm remembering now. And um, when I came out, I said my first love then. Uh, I've met my first love in Sylvia, rest in peace now, as well. Obviously, uh, my friend, my brother in law, and big respect to my uncle Bob and Sonia as well. Love you both dearly, see you both soon. And um, came out, but he was like boasty, like to say, tell people, yeah, I've done a detention center, I want to go to Borstal next, you know, like it was like feathers underneath your cap. What a way to learn, though, early role models, see, environment plays a big, big part in it. And of course, you know, the parent and the, you know, your background and, and that kind of stuff. If you haven't got that kind of, Uncle Yemi can really feel it for you uh, when there's no one there. Uh, I can really resonate with all that. I'm gonna be back up, I'm reminiscing all day again. I love you all. <laughs>